And, and, and just before I started to like have negative thoughts coming, my mind went back to that word that I was just reading, and I will go in church uh, about hospitality. And, 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 and I smiled and I said, Lord, you're funny. You know? Our God has a sense of humor where He gives you the word, and then not even an hour after, people are all coming home. And then it really challenged me. But praise the Lord, amen? Yeah. Yeah. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, this afternoon, Father, we just thank you, Father, for this time as we come before you, Lord. We thank you for your word, Lord. In the Lord's name I pray. Amen. amen. So, whoever had, uh, had the time to look at the first Samuel, chapter 16, verse 1 to 13, can, can you just read it loud, out loud for us, please? First Samuel, chapter 16, verse 1 to 13. Samuel did what the Lord said. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town traveled when they met him. They asked, Do you come in peace? Samuel replied, Yes, in peace, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Peter and thought, Surely the Lord's anointing stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I am rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called and had him passed and confronted Samuel. But Samuel said, The Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then had Shammah passed by. But Samuel said, No has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse had seven of his sons passed before Samuel. But Samuel said to him, The Lord has not chosen this. So he asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? They is still the youngest, Jesse answered. He is taking the sheep. Samuel said, Send for him, we will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent for him and had him walk in. He was growing with health and had a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, Rise and anoint him. This is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day, for the Spirit of the Lord came out to upon David. Samuel then went to Rabbi. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. yes. um, as I said, um, the thing was season. Seasons, time to grow. Yeah? And the first subtopic was. Uh, a book cover. I, I, I remember when my boys were growing up, and I've done the same thing when I was growing up. When uh, at a young age, when I was taking them to the library, they will go to the shelf where they see that the uh, book cover has uh, like uh, pictures of comic, and then they, that's a book they're going to take home. They won't go to any other book. Because they see the, on the book of this Superman, this Batman, so that's the one they're going to take home. But as they grow, as they, they, they came of age, they started to take less comic and take novels. What they will do is they will turn to the back and then they will read the whole story, what the book is about, and that's a book they'll take. And um, many a times I've got it wrong. You know, like when I meet people for the first time, I, I judge them on how they look, how they talk, and uh, not really making an effort to, to know them. Um, so many times we do that mistake that when we see someone at work or, or someone comes home that we, it, it's normal, it's a flesh, that we make a judgment straight away and say this person is this, 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 but we do not know their life story. We do not know what, the story behind that person, amen? And, uh, and um, it's the same with uh, when um, Samuel went to anoint uh, 
table. Seven sons came before Samuel. And each time he said, surely this, this is the one. And then and God said, no. God said, no. And, and as uh, Sister Tupo said in verse 7, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or at his physical structure, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees, for man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. You know, God could have saved Samuel this trip to burn anointing. He could have told Samuel, I've chosen David, go straight there, anoint David with the oil, and that's, that's, he's going to be the king. But God didn't allow that. He didn't tell Samuel ahead of time. He, instead, he allowed Samuel to go through the process. God gives the instruction, Samuel follows. Instead, he, he leads each and every one of us one step at a time, teaching us to trust him and to continually listen for his voice. Remember, the Lord will move heaven and earth to show us his will if necessary. Amen? So we should never stop short of submitting to him because we don't know his whole plan. Obey him and expect him to reveal exactly what you need for the next step. That's what seasons are about. Obey the Lord as you go through your season and do exactly as he has told you for the next step. So, subtitle 2 was season. It's like when we have seasons. We have, we have uh, spring, summer, autumn, winter. We are coming through autumn, slowly beginning to winter. Seasons. We go through spiritual seasons. As, as, a, as a Christian, as a born again Christian, we go through spiritual seasons where lessons are learned, perseverance and endurance are taught, and patience is required when we go through a season. See, a perfect example is David. He's just been anointed. He's just been told by Samuel, you are going to be the next king. What do you, did you think uh, Samuel, uh, David did after that, after being told, you're going to be the next king? What did he do? Mm, remember? Oh, off the top of your head? He went back to his day job, looking after the flocks. Even though God had told him, you're going to be the next king. Straight away after that day, he went and continued with his day job. And that act alone, reveals David's character, the humbleness of willing to wait until the appointed time that he becomes a king. See, David was willing to do whatever the Lord wanted, and it was because of his faith that God used him so powerfully. Just as God sent Moses into the house of Pharaoh for training, he sent David into Saul's palace for preparation at the right time. The Lord always equipped us for the task he gives us. First Samuel chapter 17 verse 11. When Goliath stepped forward to offer the challenge, which was, one man who represents each nation, winner takes all. That was what Goliath was offering. So, in his fear of men allowed this to eclipse his faith in the Lord. See, without fellowship with God, our fear is unhinged in destroying us both spiritually and physically. I'll say that again. Without fellowship with God, our fear is unhinged in destroying us both spiritually and physically. You know what? How many times when we go through seasons, when God is taking us from point A to point B, and we have gone off course? We have taken shortcut. I have done it. And, and I have learned that the hard way. And then many times, days, months, we are down the track. Then I realized, oh, I now see what God was doing. Taking me from point A to point B. I now see why he did this, he moved that. Equipping me for this past that I had. So for us as Christians, when you go through your season, be patient. 
Amen? And fellowship with God. Subheading uh, three, finding courage in the face of stiff challenge. First Samuel 17, 26. We ask, how did David stay brave when facing for life? He feared and loved God more than he feared anything else. And that is in Psalms 27, Jeremiah 9, 24. And that is the key to David's success. He feared and loved God more than he feared anything else. See, anytime God requires us to face uh, tribulation and trials, he always provides the courage to meet the demand. David was a great man of uh, was a man of great courage, not, not just human courage, but courage rooted in the sovereignty of God. In 1 Samuel 17, we see God's supernatural strength in action in the life of David. Defeat is never a viable option for the person of courage. As David faced Goliath, he never considered defeat an option. People of courage refuse to look for ways of escape. They set their gaze on advancement and victory. Never go into battle entertaining thoughts of defeat, because you have lost half the battle when you do that. You will lose every time. Men and women of courage know their success lies with our unshakable God. That is why every Sunday we turn up. <coughs> because we believe that. We acknowledge that. Amen, church? Yes. Courageous people recall past victory and God's faithfulness. At times, they would have faced enemy just as vicious as Goliath. But in the moments before the battle, they would recall how God had strengthened him in the past to kill both a lion and a bear. And he expected the same sort of help to strengthen him against Goliath. And that applies to us today. That's why some days we have testimonies. That, that those of us that seek and listen to the testimony are encouraged. When you feel like there are times when you, you have nothing to hold on to, think back to your past victory through God. Amen? Amen. Think back how God had brought you through and hold on to it. Courage is a result of having the right attitude. David realized he could not win in his own strength. He knew God had to be with him or he would suffer defeat. And that should apply to us also. You know, without God, we cannot do anything. You might feel that you have succeeded for the first two weeks, but down the track, the kickback is more harmful, amen? Mm -hmm. Courageous people look to God and trust his guidance. See, when David's brother mocked him, so doubted him, Goliath made fun of him. Their negative talk did not affect David. Every time God called you to follow him, except, expect opposition, even from surprising sources. You know, when God calls you to do something new, you expect opposition. And the people that you never thought would oppose you, they oppose you. But for you, stay the course. I mean, church? But trusting God means looking beyond what we can see to what He sees. Amen? Amen? Let me repeat that again. Trusting God means looking beyond what we can uh, trusting God means looking beyond what we can see to what He sees. David knew the Lord would be victorious, and because of it, he proceeded with confidence. It goes on to say in verse 37, Faithful obedience should be our response whenever the Holy Spirit prompts us to go into action. Faithful obedience. David activated his faith before he activated his will. Before he began his walk into the valley, to confront Goliath, he recalled the faithfulness of God and all the ways he had previously delivered him. 
David did exactly what he knew how to do while trusting God to do the rest. That is what living by faith boils down to. <coughs> living by faith boils down to living in the confidence that God is supremely faithful to keep his word. Amen, Chip? Picture this. So David is down at the down at the valley and on both sides are the mountain top. You have the Israelites one side and the Philistines one side. And they are Philistines are not just standing there in silence. For sure they would be shouting for their champion. They would be shouting. And here is a young boy who's gone down the valley with all the shouting and standing before him is a giant. And he has to walk to the riverbed, pick five stones, and walk towards Goliath. That, that is terrifying, I can tell you that. For some of us, I mean, because, because we read in the Bible, we say, oh, I'll do the same thing that David does. I'll face Goliath. Good on you. But I can tell you, at that time, for a young boy to walk down to the riverbed and pick five stones while the Philistines are cheering for the champion is terrifying. And then he loads his swing and fire the one shot that changed his life and the course of Israel's future. See, once that, that stone left David's swing, God stepped in to do what only he could do. And Goliath went down in defeat. That's faith in action. I remember in Sunday school in back home in Fiji, there was a story that there was the Sunday school teacher always used to, to uh, talk about faith. He said, ah, I, I don't know if any of you have heard it, but there was a flood that was rising and uh, this home owner climbed on top of the roof and started praying and said, Lord, uh, I'm calling upon you in faith to deliver me. Not, not, uh, not um, long after that, a, a, a speedboat comes. This is a fire and rescue. And tell me, oh, jump in, we'll take it. He said, no, 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 I'm waiting on my God. I shall continue praying. So they leave him, they move to the next house. Not long, um, a air rescue helicopter comes in over above him. And he said, well, put the swing down when you climb up. And he says, no, I'm still waiting on God. What happens? The river overflows the house and he drowned. Now when he got to heaven, he complained to God. He said, why was it that I was praying in faith and you didn't, you didn't come down to help me? And then God said, I sent to the boat and the helicopter. You know, it could be praying faith, but you also you have to activate it. I mean, church, just like David, he had the faith, but he knew he had to step out and face Goliath. Just like us today, as we go through our season, if you're after a new job, you cannot just sit and pray and expect a new job. No, you've got to do your research, you've got to search, and, 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 and you've got to apply for it. And when you apply for it, you say, go directly to the correct one, and you open only that window. It's one thing, just having faith and praying, but no action. We, mention, we do that in our seasons as we go through. Faith is saying to God, I believe you will. Throughout the Old Testament, we hear David make this declaration of faith to God again and again. Psalms, I trust in you, God. See, we grow, we grow in faith by exercising it. By trusting God in situation after situation, circumstance after circumstance, relationship after relationship. The good news is that God has given each of us a measure of faith to develop. Each and every one of us have been given a measure of faith. And how you nurture the faith to grow to where David is, it's up to you. But we have been all been given that measure of faith. Amen, church? We can stand firm and resist the enemy, but only by the power of God. He is the one who hears our praise and rushes to our defense. He gives us the ability to trust Him and surrender our lives to Him. Next slide, uh, Isaac. Thank you.
to conclude the chapter, whatever season you're in or going through, stay the course. You are there for a reason. Keep in fellowship with God. Know that you might not understand or see the big picture now, but He sees your tomorrow. Any chance? He sees your tomorrow. When you face, when you are faced with the Goliaths in your daily life, draw near to God through prayer and spending time in His Word. When you're needing something to hold on to, recall your past victories and God's faithfulness to you. Amen, you check? Shift your fear into faith. Let me encourage you, church, this afternoon. Shift your fear into faith. If you are sitting here and you think that with all that you've gone through, you need a way out. That the season that you are in right now, you can't handle it anymore. Close your eyes. If you need to come before God this afternoon and say, Lord, I surrender everything I have. I surrender who I am and I need you to take over. Raise your hand. And I like more that you, you put your hand down. If you are sitting here, you, you need a new vision, you need a new joy from God, you need a new word. Just put your hand up. And I like more you. And you can put your hand down again. Or you have never given your life to God. And you want to this afternoon. You want to really dedicate your life to God. This is the time to Because when we finish service, you're gone for the next week. So think and meditate, church. Amen. Amen. Or if there's something that's ahead that you're praying for, lift your hand. Yeah. Amen. Let us pray. Have a comment this afternoon, Father. Who is that doing? Put the hand up, Father. I bring them before you. Father. I pray, Lord, that they uh, take hold of their life, Lord, as they surrender themselves into your hands, Father. With whatever season, whatever trial they go through, Father God, that by your grace and your word you surround them and bring them all out there. And by your power, Lord Jesus. This afternoon, Lord, at least someone sitting here that hasn't put their hands up due to fear. How would I pray a peace upon this person? But the rest they will, they will know that uh, we have their tomorrow safety, safe in your hands. This afternoon, Father, I just commit this into your hands. And I pray and lift that you will go forth to fulfill its purpose. For this week, for the month, and for the year. In Jesus' wonderful name, I pray. Amen. Thank you, Church. I thought uh, Church was all right. And we'll sing our last uh, hymn. I'll close him. Ask him to know where you are. Um, this is uh, Matthew Pearl, right, sir? And after we finish our um, church service, remain standing. And I'll ask Pastor Thomas to come and close us with the blessing and the end of service. Thank you, Church.
hasta el punto y hasta aquí. La cabeza de la chica 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 de la chica